The first scripture reading today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 through 17 and verse 20. <clears throat> Hannah was a very religious woman. She spent her days praying and trying to serve God by being a good woman and good wife. She wanted to be a good mother too, but she did not have children. This made her very sad. One day, she went to the temple by her house. Oh, wait, no. She went to the temple, her house of worship, to pray to God for a son. She sat outside the temple crying and praying. She prayed to God, reminding God that she was God's servant and wanted, to, wanted but one thing only. Then she made a promise. She said, Oh, God Almighty, if you will only see my misery and remember me by giving me a son, then I will give my son to serve you, God, for all of his days of life. A priest at the temple, Eli, saw her sitting outside. Because she was behaving strangely, he thought she was a vagrant. Why are you hanging around the temple, he asked. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief, asking God to grant me prayer. Eli was moved by how earnestly she was praying and said, Go in peace, and may God of Israel grant you, wit, grant you what you have asked him. Several months later, Hannah gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks, Mike. All right. This is the second scripture reading from Palms, chapter 78, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in, this, in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will, not, we will tell to the coming generation, the glorious deeds of the God, the Lord, and his might, and the wonders that he has done. He establishes a decree in Jacob and appoints a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to the children, their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the words of God, but keep his commandments. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. So can we put that picture up? So it's a pretty random picture, right? It's a very random location. It's here in Jacksonville. It's where Cassett Avenue meets Edgewood Avenue. This location, this parking lot, is, of, is one of the places with the most significance in my life and in my family's life. Um, with our struggle to get pregnant, um, we visited a couple of in vitro doctors, even in California. We moved across here and had to go through that whole process again. Um, we went through many, I went through many procedures, and one day my phone rang when I was on my way to that red brick building that's in the background. That's the Winn-Dixie headquarters here in Jacksonville. They were in a client of ours, um, but my phone rang. I, this is before it was like against the law to answer your phone when you were driving, right? This is back in the 2000s. Um, and uh, it was my doctor's office, and they asked me if I could pull over. And this is the parking lot where I pulled over and I received the word that I indeed was expecting a child. <laughs> so, sorry if I'm getting teary. I didn't think I'd get so teary. Um, so, in this very same neighborhood, I had the pleasure of working um, a little bit last week and the week before. Um, a church school, the Zarephath Academy, which is attached to the Zarephath um, Tabernacle off of um, 10th Street in Phoenix on the north side. Um, we didn't finish up on Friday. We said we'd come back on Monday, and they said, oh, great. 
chapel is on Monday. And I was pretty excited. So we did what we needed to do, and then we heard music coming from the chapel and singing coming from the chapel. So we ran in to see all the kids there. The pastor was playing the, um, the keyboard and singing, and, the, um, and his brother was playing the drums. And it was lively, and it was lovely, and it was um, great to you know, see just a whole bunch of activity, a bunch of kids praising God in that venue. Um, and then he told the story of Hannah that um, Paige just read. And although I am not the most religious woman, nor was I back when I was trying to conceive a child, I'm a super thankful woman, and I listened to that message, and I thought of my, my story. And my story, after finding out that I was pregnant, um, wanting a boy, actually, but as you can see, God gave me a really pretty girl who's kind of a tough chick, so that works out, too. Um, but, you know... A couple weeks, I'm sorry, several months later, I got the call that I was having a girl. And the first thing I did naturally was run to Target and buy two dresses. Um, But I remember driving out of the Target parking lot telling God how grateful, how humble I was, and swearing that I would raise her to the very best of my abilities and do everything I could to give her the life that he would be proud of for giving me this amazing gift. So a lot of parents do that, right? I'm not the only one who has these kids that we we tell God, help us, help us get this right. We've got a bunch of them over there. That group over there that you can't all see on the Zoom, I'm so sorry, that is what it looks like when you bring your kids to church and you give them to God and ask him to help you raise them. So let's hear from them how they feel about being brought up in church and what it's meant to them. Okay, about seven years ago, I started asking my mom more and more about the Bible, asking her questions and about church, and she didn't know how to answer them or how to put it into words to where I could understand. So I finally asked if she knew any churches or people who knew I could ask. And that very next day, my mama came home from work. She was telling everyone at work she works with about how I was asking so many questions. Finally, she found someone at her work, Ms. Paula Gibbons. Her and my mom worked together, and she was telling them, and she just came across that she knew that the youth was looking for people. Then came that Sunday. My parents were bowlers at the time, and I had to go with them. But little did I know that people from church and youth were going to be there to talk to me a little about it. They told me to come on a Sunday morning to see how I liked it. And after that, it all became history because I'm here seven years later telling this story and it brought me out of my shell to talk in front of you all on Sunday mornings. My mom really helped me get into church by bringing me every Wednesday and waited in the parking lot for an hour, even when she didn't feel good. With this youth group, I was able to go to new places and help homeless people get closer to God to show what we were learning when we would go donate food to them. Going to PYT 2018, and getting way closer to God and with the girls and the friends I've made from other states to be able to learn what they've learned over their years. I knew I was getting closer to God and that I wanted to share what I was going through with someone who I knew I was going to be close to for the rest of my life. And then my sister got pregnant and I knew God was listening. So once my niece Paisley was born, I knew I had to bring her and show God that I was serious and wanted her to be looked over and show her through life early enough like how he did with me seven years ago. Oh, great. (laughs) Hey, y'all. All righty. I'm one of the many children in this world who grow up in church. I'm a fourth generation Presbyterian girl. Um, My journey started here in the preschool when I was in class learning Bible stories and a bunch of Bible songs and prayers for when we would eat or just go have fun or before nap time or something like that. But just because preschool, or not just because of preschool, I started coming here too. 
And growing up, I know I could speak for me and all the girls, is that we looked up to Amanda Hamilton, Bethany, Danielle, and Ashley Gibbons, because they were just so in tune with their religious spirit. Like, it was like, it's crazy. I wanted to be just like them, and they taught me so much. I know they taught the girls a lot. It was just like, it's pretty rad, if I do say so myself, knowing them. Um, <laughs> but most of my godliness that I've learned has come from my grandma and my mom. My grandma would always send me birthday cards or just letters in the mail talking about her life and what's going on because, you know, she's old school. And always at the end, it would end with, God bless you. And that always, like, put a smile on my face because it was like, he does bless me. He does bless me with a wonderful life, always knowing what I'm doing, how I am. And it's just, like, nice to feel. And it was like, because I will do that to my kids so they know. But my mom was the one who sent me to Camp Montgomery in the sixth grade with two of my best friends. The craziest week ever. <laughs> um, but at Camp Montgomery, we would always pray before we ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And when I came back from that week of Camp Montgomery, I would pray before we even ate a chip at La Napolera. Because I would smack her hand out of the chip bowl and be like, no, we have to pray. And I've been doing that ever since, and I'm now a senior. So, you know, you learn a lot from just a week of praying and learning. And if I didn't go there, I wouldn't be praying and doing what I'm doing now, standing up here in front of everybody, low-key freaking out because I'm nervous. <laughs> um, oh, hey. <laughs> I'm not done. Um, also, PYT opened my heart and my eyes even more in 2018 when I learned about God in many different ways, in many different situations and stories. And again, if my mom didn't send me there, or if like, just wasn't a thing, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be praising God, loving him like I do now. I'm done. Okay, hi. Um, so, since I was younger, I've been coming to the church since, I don't know, like, I was a baby or something. Yeah. Um, so I've been there since I was a baby, but I've been with the Presbyterian Church. Uh, my parents, my mom was at the Presbyterian Church, and then my grandparents were in the Presbyterian Church. So whenever we would go for, like, vacation up to my grandparents' house, especially New Jersey, we would go to my mom's old Presbyterian Church that was big, and it looked like a gothic, like, Catholic church, but it was Presbyterian, so that confused me, but, um, yeah, so, don't know where that one, go, okay, um, so, that was mainly, this is not going well, <laughs> um, yeah, um, where can I start off? <laughs> okay, anyway, so I did BPS for like two years or something, and through BPS, I was able to watch the younger kids that were mainly in the pre-K would come to VPS and learn about Jesus. So for that whole week, we learned about mainly water, and so one of the stories that I remember is, of course, Moses and how he tapped on a rock and water came out of it. Well, whenever the kids heard it, they were all like, oh my God, like that actually happened. And so I was, of course, in the back because I just was able to bring the kids to different sections. And that was like a really great moment of learning, of mainly watching how the younger generation was learning and how like I learned because I as well went to VPS when I was younger and I was one of those kids that would go every year to VPS here at the church and learn more about Jesus in a more kid-friendly, like, I guess, way. Yeah. Um, so through that whole experience, it helped me learn of mainly, I don't know what else I'm saying. I'm just going around in a circle. Okay. <laughs> don't know what else to say. 
All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, hi. So those of you who may know me, you know that like my whole life revolves around music and music's like my thing. So I've heard my mom say that she feels like music is her gift and that's why she always sings in church. I'm the same way. Some of my earliest memories involve being at the church before this one and seeing my mom help lead the music and I would go up and steal the microphone from her and I would sing. And that's like my earliest memories, that's what I remember. Um, music is the easiest way for me to feel closest to God. And my mom was the one who showed me that. She pushed me to do my first solo, which was Happy Birthday Jesus. And I did that for several years at that church and here. Um, because of my mom, I am surrounded by God through music. I hear the word on the radio in the car every day. Um, when we were finally able to open the church back up this year after quarantine, doing music and playing music with my mom is what brought us not only closer together, but closer to God. Um, my parents' decision to bring us to Kirkwood after preschool has been one of the most influential decisions in my life. Because of them, I had the opportunity to go to places like Camp Montgomery with my two best friends and PYT with my other best friends. <laughs> um, and I got to meet new people and connect through God through fellowship and music. I like to believe that without music, without the gift of music that I inherited from my mother, I would be going through life blind. God gave me music in the presence of my mother, and she led me to where I am today, standing here in front of all of you. If it wasn't for her and all the other wonderful parental figures I have here in this church, like Miss Kathy, I may have never found my way through life. So thank you. Thank you for showing me God, and thank you for showing me music. So I just want to tie that up in a little bow and um, thank all of you for all of the um, inspiration and all of the examples that you have set for these kids here. It's made my job as youth director very easy. Um, they see their parents volunteering. They see them stepping out of comfort zones and being on session. They see them, their friends' parents volunteering. They volunteer themselves. And they really do, they're so, it's so easy to get them to do stuff anymore. It's like they just have watched the example that, like Caitlin said, we parental figures have provided for them. So teach your children well. I would say mission accomplishing um, because, of course, there's still work to do with this group and the next one's coming up. Um, we're famous at this church for being friendly and caring, and that's what all of you have done for these kids. Mr. Craig Acree, God rest his soul, used to always walk up to the kids after youth group, whether they thought it went crummy or if they thought it went great, and tell them that they did a great job. And it's that kind of uplifting that all of you have done and will continue to do, I know, that has helped all of us teach our children well. <laughs>